everyone. Uh, today I am going to demonstrate to you uh, proper techniques of a volumetric titration. So to perform a titration I have a burette stand, uh, a burette and I have a white background. I have two uh, conical flasks. Uh, I have my titrant and titrant. In this case it is uh, sodium hydroxide and HCl. And I have a few uh, beakers. I have my indicators and I have uh, pipettes. I have a funnel, then I have a pipette bulb and a wash bottle. Now, the first most important part of a volumetric titration is cleaning the glassware. So, I will start with the burette. So, now my burette, as you can see, is clamped. So, I need to take the burette out uh, to perform the washings. So, initially, you have a very tight grip uh, to this burette make sure it is not falling down and then you can uh, safely take this out right so in a burette there are few parts and this is the graduation this graduation part is made in borosilicate glass in this case but in the market you can find plastic burettes also and depending on the accuracy of this graduation these burettes are classified into two classes class a class b and class c class a is the most accurate type of burettes and uh, the class A calibrated burettes are commonly found in uh, testing laboratories in uh, commercial testing purposes and uh, in research. For teaching purposes at the Institute of Chemistry we are using class B uh, burettes. Uh, the accuracy is a little bit less than uh, class A burettes but it is good enough for teaching purposes. And uh, this part is called the jet part and this allows a controlled and small flow of the solution in the burette uh, to a um, titration flask and this is the tap and in the tap in here I have a adjustable part to uh, adjust the uh, tap movement the hard hardness of the tap movement and uh, this part is made of Teflon and as you can know Teflon is one of the most resistive uh, polymers ever made and therefore it is resistant uh, to various chemicals such as acids, bases, oxidizing agents, reducing agents etc. So to uh, clean this burette, initially I want to make sure my tap is uh, okay for a moment like this so I can adjust this uh, rotating part and you know um, make the tap comfortable for my fingers and then before um, adding any wash solutions in this burette you have to make sure that now burette is closed right so to wash this burette we are not going to use tap water because the tap water can contain uh, trace amounts of impurities like heavy metals or any other impurities or else the uh, pH of the tap water can deviate from uh, pH 7 so if our tap water has some acidity or some basicity it can give us erroneous results for acid based titrations so to wash the glassware and do any dilutions of uh, quantitative experiments we are using either distilled water or DNS water in this case I am using a DNS water so this is a wash bottle and you have a jet part in here so when you apply some pressure uh, you can uh, use the uh, DNS water inside the bottle so initially what I am going to do is to have some water <coughs> in my burette so when you are transferring water from wash bottle to the burette there is a common mistake students do where they insert the wash bottle inside the burette like this which is a very wrong technique where you are going to contaminate the tip of your wash bottle with the any possible chemicals in the inner walls of this burette so the correct technique is without inserting the tip of your wash bottle inside this burette um, we have to transfer the DNS water so you are not contaminating the tip of this wash bottle right so I have uh, added some water into this uh, burette 
Now what I am going to do, now make sure my uh, tap is closed so you don't have some any, any uh, unexpected leaking of uh, solutions from this burette. Now I can carefully make this uh, burette horizontal like this. Uh, you have to have some practice not to uh, spill water. Then uh, I can rotate this burette a couple of times like this. Then my graduated part is clean. Now I want to uh, clean the jet part. So I will make this burette vertical like this and to a sink I can carefully open this tap and let the jet let the water DNS water uh, flow through the jet part and uh, in this step the jet part will be clean so if I try to uh, remove all the water from the jet part it will take a lot of time so what I'm going to do now is to remove the excess water uh, from the graduation part itself like this right and then after that again you can uh, open the jet part to remove any remaining water in the jet part okay. so now I have cleaned this viewer with deionized water to remove any um, any residual chemicals inside the inner walls to make sure my cleaning is accurate um, I'm going to clean it one more time it is not a bad idea to uh, clean the burette twice with DNS water so I'm quickly adding some DNS water making it vertical having a small rotation now I'm going to clean the jet part and closing the tap now I'm going to remove the excess water and uh, I'm going to remove the excess water in the jet part also and I'm going to carefully clamp it right now I have washed my uh, burette my burette is clean from any residual chemicals uh, from a last titration however if I just fill this burette with uh, my titrant there will be error because we have cleaned this using DNS water now we have uh, we have some water remaining in the inner walls of this burette so if I fill the burette with chemical right now there will be a dilution due to the residual amount of water remaining so to correct that error I need to rinse this burette with the chemical I am going to uh, put on this burette right so in this case I am uh, going to do this titration with sodium hydroxide so the sodium hydroxide solution is coming to my burette therefore I want to rinse this burette with sodium hydroxide so we have freshly prepared 0.1 mol sodium hydroxide and firstly I want to transfer some sodium hydroxide to a beaker uh, then it is easy for me to uh, pipe it or transfer the solutions again this beaker I need to clean first I will apply uh, some DINS water and uh, clean this uh, beaker and then I need to rinse this beaker with my solution as well because this is a quantitative experiment you are doing a volumetric titration and based on the volumes you are going to calculate the concentrations of your unknown solutions so if you just add now as you can see now I washed it and I have some amount of water remaining in the beaker and I need to remove that beaker uh, remo remo remove that water from the beaker and to make sure I want to rinse the inner walls of the beaker from the solution itself so I can make sure now there are no remaining water in, in the inner walls what I have in the inner walls are also sodium hydroxide so this is very diluted sodium hydroxide few drops I can afford to go down the drain right now my beaker is washed and rinsed now I am going to transfer some sodium hydroxide into this beaker and um, 
be mindful now i my in this case my uh, sodium hydroxide was in a volumetric flask like this and i had to remove the cap in order to transfer when i remove the cap or let's keep the cap in your table like this so you won't be contaminating uh, the cap with any chemicals in this bench top and again one common mistake students do is they just keep the tap uh, cap like this and now if you have any other chemicals in this bench top they will uh, get attached to the cap and when you close the cap then this uh, solution will be contaminated right so avoid doing that always uh, when you remove the cap either you can there are techniques to uh, keep the cap in your hand when you transfer or else you can simply um, uh, do this operation this way to make sure you are not contaminating it right okay now again i am carefully taking my burette out and i am going to transfer some sodium hydroxide into this burette so if you are used to transfer directly from a beaker to burette I have no problems if you do that but if you don't have confidence initially to transfer directly then you can use a funnel again I am uh, I'm going to teach the funnel operation in a moment at the moment for now uh, I am uh, going to transfer some sodium hydroxide to my beaker for cleaning purpose you don't need to transfer a large amount of sodium hydroxide again it is a common mistake students do they they add about 25-30 milliliters of um, titran uh, for cleaning purposes then you will be running out of chemicals and uh, when we do experiments we need to uh, make sure that we are not using uh, excess amounts of chemicals we, we, we need to minimize the usage of chemicals because these chemicals are bad for the environment so Again, I'm doing the same operation. I'm make, uh, making the burette horizontal and I am uh, give some rinsing with my sodium hydroxide solution. Therefore, any now what I have inside this inner walls of my burette is the same sodium hydroxide solution. So I, I will not have the error associated with the dilution of remaining water uh, when I do the titration. I can do the same thing for the jet part also and I am rinsing the jet part with the sodium hydroxide solution and carefully closing the tap then I can uh, get rid of the excess uh, sodium hydroxide solution and now my burette is ready for uh, the titration okay my next task will be uh, filling of the burette uh, with my solution so now if you can carefully see again the graduation of this burette in here you have zero the topmost calibration of this uh, burette is zero and the bottommost calibration is 50 so this is a 50 milliliter burette again you will see now if you fill this burette all the way to top using uh, sodium hydroxide this top portion will be 0 not 50 and uh, you might wonder why the graduation is other way around okay so the reason behind this type of a graduation is that we are interested in a titration of our titration mixture right so we are, we are using a titration flask like this and we have my HCl in this case as a titran um, to be titrated and I will be introducing my acid base indicator to this uh, conical flask and the titration reaction take, is taking place in this titration flask. The role of the burette is to quantitatively transfer a required volume of your titran to this titration flask therefore if you have filled all the way that means nothing is in your titration flask so the calibration is zero 
and if you add 2 milliliters, that means 2 milliliters are now in your titration flask. So it goes like that, that is why um, the topmost calibration is 0. And again, in the titration, you are not required to fill your tit titrant to 0 exactly. If you want, you can start from 10. If you want, you can start from 20. But you have to carefully record the starting volume of your uh, burette. Now, I will leave it, try to uh, fill this burette. Before I uh, continue, now I have transferred some amount of sodium hydroxide into my beaker. And later on, I have transferred some HCl into a beaker as well. So therefore, to prevent error of using the wrong chemical, we have to label these beakers carefully when we transfer any chemical to a beaker or any type of cluster. And technically, if you have any chemical like this without any labeling, by definition, that this becomes a hazardous waste. Because now, let's say I got an emergency and I go out, and a different person come here and that person doesn't know what is inside this beaker right so this become a uh, hazardous waste in that event. so i recommend students to bring some sticker papers like this uh, to lab and it is always a good idea to have a pen and uh, now i'm going to label this as sodium hydroxide so today i'm only using 0.1 sodium hydroxide so labeling this as sodium hydroxide is enough if you are using a series of sodium hydroxide solutions then maybe you need to uh, mention the concentration also right now i'm going to add a little bit more and i'm going to transfer now when you are transferring uh, the titrant to a uh, burette you have to do it while it is planted and if you are tall enough uh, to the top that you can uh, still keep this burette in the bench top and do the transferring but otherwise make yourself comfortable you can always take a stool and uh, you can take this uh, burette to the stool right again if you are comfortable of transferring uh, this um, uh, transferring the uh, sodium hydroxide directly from a beaker you can always go for that but if not you have to use a funnel like this so initially you have to check whether your burette is vertical or not so in that in this case i can see there's a small angle in my burette that will uh, that can cause some errors so i can uh, adjust from this knob right here and i can adjust the angle and if the knob is not working properly you can always use a uh, tissue and uh, for the operation right so now i'm going to transfer some uh, sodium hydroxide to my burette so initially again you have to make sure that the burette is closed otherwise when you feel from the top uh, this chemical will be leaking from the jet part so if you are used to do a direct transfer like this you can always go for that i have no problems with it but if you don't have confidence to transfer directly from a beaker you have to use a funnel again when you when i'm using a funnel i am keeping the funnel in this way to make sure the jet part of the funnel is not contaminated right keeping it this way is wrong because now you are contaminating the stem of this funnel and again now we have cleaned the beaker, we have cleaned the burette. Same way we have to clean the funnel as well. So there's no point of cleaning uh, the beaker, uh, the burette and rinsing the burette and doing all this operation. If we have some acid or some base residue in this funnel, that can cause a error. So I'm using my DNS water and I need to clean the outside walls of this stem also. And then I carefully add some amount of sodium hydroxide to this funnel to make sure that the inner walls of this funnel is rinsed well so uh, there will be no uh, 
error due to dilution and uh, I'm going to rinse the outside walls of the stain as well. Now when you transfer uh, uh, the titrant into the beaker, you are not supposed to just rest it like this. So in that case what happens is you don't, in this case this is a plastic funnel so we will have less amount of problems but when you do this there will be no air circulation when you add solution uh, from the funnel right so what happens in here is always we have to lift the funnel like this when you are filling in a solution so i am now lifting my funnel like this then i can add my sodium hydroxide So my purpose is to add this all the way, so I will be needing a little bit more. Right, now I have filled this and my next target is to make it to zero. So, to add a volume of accurate measurement directly can be a problem. So, the easiest way is to add a little bit more sodium hydroxide and then you can use this tap to take this volume to zero. So, when you do that, always make sure your eye level is parallel to the uh, the graduation required so in my case i need to uh, take this solution to zero and uh, you will be seeing a small uh, picture of a solvent meniscus and the meniscus should be in parallel with the graduation so now my eye level is parallel to the meniscus and I am going to carefully uh, remove the excess amount of sodium hydroxide to adjust my solvent level exactly in the zero calibration. Now one of the common mistakes students do when they are filling a burette and performing a titration, they perform the titration when the, while the funnel is on. So as soon as you transfer sodium hydroxide HCl or any titrant to your burette we make sure you are removing the funnel right because this funnel can have some sodium hydroxide in it and after you adjust the volume then one drop can leak down so in that case there is no point of carefully adjusting the vol volume if you still have the funnel on and while you are doing titration, if one drop falls from the funnel into burette, there will be a error in volume, right? So to avoid that, you have to get rid of the funnel as soon as you transfer, then do the volume adjustment. Now I have filled the burette and I have to make sure when I fill the burette, my jet part is free from any air bubbles, right? That can be done by opening the tap. So what I have done here was, I have added excess volume of my required solvent level, then I have opened the tap. So in that operation, I have uh, removed any possible air bubbles. Now if you have air bubbles in your jet part of the burette, there can be an error that that bubble can be gone while you are doing the titration therefore there will be a small error in volume so we want to avoid that error so make sure before you start anything your jet part is now clean uh, free from any air bubbles right. so, as you can see this is the air bubble uh, from the washing steps of the burette and uh, my burette is filled with solution and if i open the tap these uh, air bubbles are now gone and uh, my jet part of the burette is 
free from the above right so now i am done with my burette operation now i am coming to my pipettes so again i have two types of pipettes in here both are 25 ml pipettes this is called a bulk pipette and this is called a um, graduated pipette and when i am using a graduated pipette the accuracy is a little bit low as you can see the diameter of this part of a bulk pipette is smaller than that of a graduated pipette so if i use this pipette the error will be a little bit more however these pipettes are very accurate you can uh, accurately measure 25 milliliters into accuracy of two decimal points 25.00 milliliters so what i recommend here is now these graduated pipettes are coming in different uh, volumes only there are 25 milliliter graduated pipettes 10 milliliter pipettes 5 milliliter pipettes 50 milliliter pipettes and 100 milliliter pipettes for your research purpose if you want a different uh, volume that you can specially order it and get so if you if your purpose is to titrate 25 or transfer or measure 25 milliliters accurately, you can use the um, bulk pipette. Or if you want to measure 22, 23, 18, some odd numbers like that, then you can use a, a graduation pipette. So in my case, today I am going to titrate a 25 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. So I am going to use the correct laser. I am going to use um uh, uh bulk pipette for this so again the first point, uh, first consideration is to clean the pipette so as i did with my burette now i am going to use deionized water first to clean this pipette there are two techniques you can do this first you can uh, take a beaker add some deionized water and then you can uh, get some water, DNS water inside the bulk part, right? For that, I have a pipette bulb like this. And if you carefully see the operation of a pipette bulb, there are three knobs, right? There's an A, S, and E. And A for aspiration, S for sucking your solvent, and E for ejecting. And this is the bulb. So initially what I do is, I press this aspirate, aspirate and A button and I am pressing this pipette bulb, right? Then I am going to insert or connect this pipette bulb to my uh, beaker. Then I am going to carefully uh, insert this uh, pipe, pipette into my beaker. When you do that, make sure you are taking the solution from the bottom right if you do like this if you are taking the solution from the top part any human error your hand if your hand goes a little bit out then there will be air going inside this bulb and there will be some uh, air bubbling happening and if you somehow get some water inside this pipette bulb the pipette bulb will not function anymore so you want to protect your pipette bulb also to be careful when you are doing any pipetting. So now I am doing it correct way. When you are doing any pipetting, make sure your pipette is vertical and you have the freedom to angle your burette or any, uh, any glassware like this. But your pipette should be vertical. And now I am what I am going to do is I am going to press this S button which is for sucking and then you will see when I press it the water will come inside this bulb like this all right right so in here i am using water so i can use a uh, 25 milliliters of water now you can see in this pipette you have this part a bulb like part to prevent water is going uh, all the way to this pipette bulb that is to protect this uh, pipette bulb so if your water level is reaching this this level that uh, it is an indication for you to stop what you are doing right so to release this 
pipetted amount there are two ways again that you can press this eject button e button if you press that you can see like this the water will be ejected in my case this is not a i mean uh, this is a cleaning step so if i just get rid of the pipette bulb due to gravity again my water will be gone right so now this i uh, uh, washed my pipette using deionized water and after washing it again the jet part of the pipette is also in, uh, important that you have to wash the jet part outside walls of the jet part uh, or the tip of your uh, pipette uh, using deionized water to prevent any, any type of contamination again after carefully washing this pipette one common mistakes you do is you just leave it in a bench shop like this so if you touch your tip in the bench top any chemicals uh, on this bench top can cause contamination of the pipette tip so to avoid that either you can have a tissue or a uh, or a watch glass uh, in the bench top and you can uh, have the uh, have the pipette like this or else you can uh, simply have your pipette like this so your tip is little bit outside your bench top to prevent any type of contamination right now my pipette is clean again this is deionized water even though it is deionized water i need to label uh, it as deionized water later on otherwise i will get confused this as sodium hydroxide or hcl so this is water right my dn is water now my titrant is hcl i need to transfer some hcl to uh, uh, a beaker i'm going to wash the beaker with dn as water and uh, rinse my beaker with a small volume of HCl like this yeah put the rinsing and now I'm going to transfer a small volume of HCl to uh, the uh, beaker right so maybe in your school you have learned to mouth pipette uh, take solutions to a pipette using your mouth but at undergraduate level or at uh, this level you are not supposed to use your mouth to any glassware so you are not supposed to do mouth pipetting so on the first day of lab we will be providing a pipette bulb it is your responsibility to protect the pipette bulb if you lose it you have to purchase a new pipette bulb However, you are not supposed to put your mouth on this pipette, right? So again, I am uh, connecting the pipette bulb. Now, the outside walls of the tip of the pipette have some water. So if I insert this pipette tip to my HCL solution, there will be a small amount of dilution. So to prevent that problem, I'm going to use a small volume of HCL to rinse the outside walls of my jet part also. Now when I clean with water, I was able to take 25 milliliters of water for cleaning but HCL is my tight run. In real situations if you are doing these experiments in a laboratory maybe your tight run is limited. Maybe you are taking this solution after a series of extraction. Maybe it can be few days work. Maybe you take the sample uh, from a site that you need to uh, travel uh, kilometers to take the sample in. So if the sample is limited, you are not supposed to uh, use a large amount of uh, chemical to clean the glassware. And the next aspect of that is to prevent the usage of chemicals. You are not supposed to waste chemicals. So. To, for the rinsing purposes, therefore, I am taking only a small volume of 
it's here again i am uh, getting rid of my uh, pipette bulb and um, making this uh, pipette vertical and i am going to rinse my pipette using the HCL solution like this right right my uh, pipette is now clean and rinsed and we are good to go finally we have the titration flask okay now i need to clean the titration flask same way but in the case of titration flask if you rinse the titration flask um, using the hydrochloric acid solution then there is error because we need to transfer accurately a 25 milliliter portion of hydrochloric acid to this titration flask and if the titration flask already containing uh, some residual hydrochloric acid on the inner walls then there will be error so that will be uh, little bit more than accurately measured 25 milliliter solution so therefore you are only supposed to clean your titration flask with dns water so i'm going to apply some dns water and uh, I am going to clean this a couple of times. Now I can assume that my uh, uh, conical flask or the titration flask is clean. I am going to clean uh, the bench top a little bit also. Now I am good to go. The next step is transferring uh, my hydrochloric acid into the uh, titration flask right so first i need to label this as hydrochloric acid so when you come into a lab uh, good to have a pen in your pocket rather than asking it from your friend um, then uh, you have to have a laboratory notebook with you to record all these uh, readings and all stuff. Now I'm going to suck my solution. Again, if you can see now here I have a graduation. It is good if you can um, suck a little bit excess uh, titrant and then go back to the graduation. Again, when I am pipetting, my pipette is vertical and you have the freedom to uh, have a little bit angle for your bureau, uh, beaker right now i have taken a little bit excess volume of hydrochloric acid so i can carefully use the eject button to go into my mark like this again you will see a photo right now uh, that the meniscus should be touching this mark right right like this right then i'm carefully getting my titration flask again my titration flask is angled and my pipette is perfectly vertical then i can uh, press the e button to transfer the sodium hydroxide and after transferring like this what i can do is there is a bulb right here i can press the bulb once so it will complete the transferring then i can carefully touch this beaker in the inner wall of the uh, conical flask to make sure that uh, the transferring is complete due to uh, the capillary actions uh, sorry due to the uh, surface tension now after transferring i can see a very small amount of solution is still remaining in the pipette the pipette is calibrated 
considering that amount of uh, solvent remaining. So you don't have to worry about that small amount. It will be like 0.25 milliliters, and that is taken into consideration uh, when, when when the pipette is made. So if you try to you know uh, to blow uh, the pipette and transfer everything into this uh, titration flask, that is not a correct way of doing this titration. Okay, now my solutions are ready. Now I am going to start the titration. For this, I need to add some indicator first. So I'm uh, the indicator I am going to use here is uh, phenolphthalein. When you use acid-base indicators, you don't require more than two drops of acid-base indicator. So I am going to carefully add two drops of phenolphthalein. There's a small leak in the dropper I'm sorry about it now we are good to go I have a white background and uh, when you perform the titration you will be um, you will be uh, looking for a color change and if I don't have this white background seeing the color change against the black background is very difficult so I need to have a tile here so the color change is easily visible uh, for me okay so I can always adjust the burette to my comfortable height and uh, make sure your burette is not leaking when you adjust your burette and when you fill the burette and clean your other glassware you have to make sure that your uh, carefully measured right run is not leaking through the jet part all right so I will uh, have my clamp like this Right. and uh, my uh, titration flask like this and when you perform titration before you start the tap make sure these heights are good enough for you uh, comfortable enough for you for example if your if your burette is too high like this then it will be difficult to do the titration that you have the possibility of leaking one or two drops outside this uh, uh, titration flask if your burette is too low like this, then you don't have a freedom to swell this uh, solution, right? So adjust this to a comfortable height like this, a little bit above uh, the level of the titration flask is about right, okay? Now in here, uh, there are two ways of doing the titrations. Firstly, if you, uh, you can do a rough titration to have an intelligent guess of the approximate concentration of your unknown. So in that case, if you think, okay, my uh, uh, sodium hydroxide solution is 0.1 molar and my HCl solution is also approximately 0.1 molar, you know that your endpoint should come approximately in 25 milliliters. If you are using 25 milliliters of uh, hydrochloric acid, we know that sodium hydroxide to hydrochloric acid stoichiometry is one, one is one. So then you can first, uh, firstly you can do a rough titration and get an approximate endpoint, and then you can go for a uh, accurate uh, endpoint. That is the way of doing that. Anyway, uh, I am going to demonstrate only one titration, so I am going to add. Uh, the titrant slowly from the beginning. So there is a technique to call this burette. Now if you are a right hander, I am right hander. So if you are playing a guitar or playing a violin and if you are right hander, you will use your right hand or your used hand to the or your dominant hand to the pick or to the bow and you will use the other hand or left hand to the strings. Right. It is the same operation in here. If you are a right hander, use your dominant hand to the titration flask and use your left hand to uh, the burette. And if you are a left hander, you can ask for a left hander burette. In that case, your left hand should be on the uh, titration flask and your right hand uh, should be operating the burette. Right. So in that case, you have burettes with the calibration other way around and the tap other way around 
uh, which is called the left handed burette, you can ask for one of those. Right. And there's a technique to hold the burette also, and you're not directly operating the burette like this. It's not recommended. It will not give you a sufficient control. Now, when you see the color change, you should be able to quickly stop the flow. And when it is coming close to the end point, you should be able to carefully control the tap and uh, uh, adjust the flow, right? So to do that, the hand-eye coordination is extremely important. Now you will be seeing the color change from your eye and that message should go into your brain and the brain should send a message to your hand and your hand should control the tap. So if you directly operate the tap like this, it will be too late when you uh, it will be difficult to control but if you are using the tap in this way on rounded manner like this it is experimentally proven that uh, the control is more easy all right again throughout the titration your hand should be on the tap you are not supposed to sit down and watch your titration then you see the color change your brain gives a uh, 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 message, okay, close the tap, then you have to take your hand, go right here, it will be too late, right? So throughout your experiment, your hand should be on the titration flask, uh, on the burette tap. And when you do the titration, now I am carefully opening this tap a little bit, right? Now you can see the solution is carefully uh, going to uh, my uh, titration flask and if you just rest your titration flask like this and let the solvent flow through like this now what happens is you are mixing sodium hydroxide and HCl your reaction is happening but there is no equal distribution of this uh, titran in the titration flask Yes, the, uh, the uh, HCl concentration will be more in the middle of the titration flask, but it can be less uh, uh, outside, right? So, to prevent that, when you are performing a titration continuously, you need to swell this titration flask like this, right? Again, one common mistake students do is they shake the titration flask like this. Right. So if you shake the titration flask like this, there is a chance of removing some of the sodium hydroxide you have here or HCl you have here uh, outside the titration flask. So the correct technique is to swell it like this. Okay. And when you hold the titration flask, the conical flask, some students try to hold it from here and maybe you are scared of breaking this glassware right and they will be uh, shaking like this so it is safe you are not going to break it but it is not the correct technique to do a titration number one when you hold the titration flask from the bottom you will not have a proper control from the top part so you can accidentally have a little bit excess movement and you can uh, allow the burette to have some drops fall outside then your titration will be inaccurate and the next reason is you don't want to transfer your body heat to your titration system you let your titration occur in the room temperature so you can hold your titration flask like this using two fingers on this side and your thumb in this side to hold the conical flask so, so I'm going to now I know my endpoint will be near 25 milliliters so I can afford um, a little bit faster flow again I am going to uh, swell it con continuously and my left hand is uh, in the viewer tap so I can control the flow anytime I want Now one other important aspect in here is now when we are swelling the titration flask like this 
some small droplets of your titan and titan can be in these inner walls of your uh, conical flask understand so even if you get a very accurate endpoint color but if if you have some unreacted uh, hcl droplets in inner walls they are not reacted so your titration is technically not complete and remember what we are interested is the number of moles of hcl inside this titration flask at the end of the complete reaction the exact number of moles be transferred from the pipette will be completely neutralized so adding a small amount of dns water will not change the total number of moles yes it will increase the volume but it will not change the number of moles so you are supposed to you are allowed to have some dns water to clean the inner walls of this uh, titration flask during your titration and also now you can see there's a drop of your acid uh, drops of your sodium pyroxide uh, on this uh, on the tip of this uh, buret and uh, in the case of a very close point to your end point that without adding the tap and add a further drop then you can use this um, uh, wash bottle to transfer that drop and then you can use this wash bottle to wash any unreacted droplets of sodium hydroxide or HCl back to your reaction mixture alright and again when you do this step try not to insert the tip of the wash bottle inside your titration flask then again you, are, you will be contaminating your DNS water you can do this washing like this since this is a demonstration I am showing you the wrong techniques and right techniques both right so I am continuing my titration and I am seeing the color against a white background so I am uh, in a position to carefully uh, see the color change now when I am coming close to the end point I can see a small pink color is generating you will be uh, seeing a picture of this color later right so I am close to my end point right now now I can see I came close to an end point very close to a pinkish color the color change of these titrations are given to you in a separate material however uh, when you are using phenophthalene my target is to get the palest pink color possible right so i need to wash the walls again because i'm i know that i'm close to the end point now the last part i can carefully add drop by drop to make sure i'm not adding any excess sodium hydroxide to the system right so i added one drop Two drops again I can see a close endpoint color is appearing and disappearing carefully add another drop right so I can see this color is very pale pink color right I don't I'm not sure whether you can see it from uh, this camera or not but this is a very pale pink color if you see this color against a white background maybe you can see a very pale pinkish color right so this is my perfect endpoint for uh, uh, phenophthalene titration and not only i got the perfect pinkish color i made sure that i don't have any unreacted hcl or sodium hydroxide droplets in the inner walls or the jet part of the buren so i washed it so there are a few titrations uh, especially idometric titrations where in the middle of the titration you are supposed to take your titration flask out and add some uh, reagents in it and come back but if that is not specifically required I recommend you not to remove your titration flask from this setup then when you do that if one or two drops fall out your complete titration is erroneous so there are some uh, students 
who added who had some drop and uh, check the color uh, against the wall or something at that time you have an error of leaking few droplets so as much as possible keep the titration flask uh, below the burette tip so if you drop one drop of your sodium hydroxide you are dropping it to the titration flask itself so you can prevent the uh, error associated with it right again as i mentioned before if you do this uh, titration with the funnel on and uh, uh, at the middle of the titration if one or two drops of hcl falls into your burette your uh, complete uh, experiment will be erroneous and if i am grading you uh, by looking at your techniques if i see a student doing a titration with the funnel on uh, you will be losing some marks so funnel should be removed before you start the titration right so i hope you have learned the basic techniques of performing a titration and uh, when you are performing these experiments uh, in the lab the teaching assistants and the senior academic staff will be guiding you so the objective of this video is for you to have a preliminary idea before walking into lab so i recommend you to watch this video a couple of times and uh, note down all the important points uh, before you walk into lab thank you